Hey guys, you all done yet? Yeah, Mom. Can we go outside while you and Tessa play cards? Yeah, I'm games today, sweetie. Now let's go. Marianne, can you come here? Sorry, Tessa, I'm in a bit of a hurry. Oh? What's your excuse this time? Emergency repairs for the beaver dam? Tessa, look. No, I don't want to hear it. I want to talk to you now. Or do I need to start calling in your debts? Huh. I'd completely forgotten about that. I remember it. But not exactly like that. Here, let's see if we can call up my version, okay? You have a different version? Uh, Mom? Can we go outside while you and Tessa play cards? No, there's no time for games today. Marianne? Can we talk? No, we can't. Just leave the groceries, kids. Let's go. Oh. Don't. Please, let's just talk for a few minutes. Okay? Okay. We remember that slightly differently. I guess that makes sense. Rashomon, you know? But whatever happened, after that, they walked to the counter, and then Marianne lashed out at Tess, right? Uh, no. I want to talk to you. Marianne defended us because now. Tessa got all preachy. Which is it going to be? I she was Allison's to memory. Now. Tessa was angry. Please, Mary let's Ann just was talk angry. for a few minutes, okay? Are you hearing this? Mary Ann was. Please, let's just talk for a few minutes, okay? Please, Mary Ann, I'm just trying. Stay away from my children. They don't need your guidance. I'm just trying to help. I don't need help. Not from you. Not from anyone else in this fucking town. I'm done with all of you! You're done with the food I give you? The fuel? Maybe you are, but the kids are my children, Tessa. Mine. Not yours. Please, let's not do this here. Let's go into my office. Fine. Okay. You two, wait here. What is wrong with you? Choices? I'm still skeptical, but okay. For now, let's say Marianne was being Marianne. But once they got into the office, they both went at it. Hard. What do you think they were arguing about? Me? I don't know. It was impossible to hear anything after she cranked up the music. But hey, now that we know she was lying to our faces, let's ask her. Yeah, I think maybe Allison, it, Tessa being upfront and angry like that didn't quite make sense to me. That seemed to jive more with what, how Tessa acted and what she said. Is she in here? Okay. Can I poke around your office while you're standing right Can there? Can I help you, Allison? Oh, uh, no, no thanks. I'm good. I'm just looking for something that I've forgotten. What's this doing here? The pious pelican. Someone got paid to write this. Oh. Man, Tessa keeps track of everything in these notebooks. Like what? Any loans she's given out, the stuff she lets regulars take for free, even her tithes. And then what? She starts passing out horse heads if people don't pay her back. Uh, I think she just <laughs> likes having a record. She's gonna hand it off to St. Paul like a resume. 2004 would have stuff on your mom. Let's take a look at that collectible. The pious pelican is the princess's generous friend. She has a magical beak that is always full of food and never empties. Uh, Tessa is the pelican. Okay. All right. Is there a story with the pelican? The pelican forgives the goblins. 63. Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient forest, there lived a pair of crafty goblins in a cave below a big wooden house. 
They lived with a wise princess who shared as much food with them as she was able, but it was never quite enough. This left the goblins hungry, very hungry, always hungry. One day, as they were out foraging for food, the pious pelican landed on a rock and dumped a smorgasbord from her beak, which the goblins knew was magic and never emptied. That was pasted over. There were king crabs in red, blue, gold, and scarlet, veiny blue shrimp, pink shelled scallops, oblong brown clams, purple spiny urchins, and even one prickly red sea cucumber. The food just kept coming. They watched as the pelican ate one clam and then took a nap. Do you think she would mind if we just took a little, asked one goblin to the other. Her beak never empties. She won't possibly miss a couple of crabs, said the second, licking her lips. They were agreed, so they crept over filched some crabs, and ran. Goblins scarfed the crabs, but when they finished, they found that they were still hungry. She won't miss a handful of shrimp, said one goblin to the other. The goblins scarfed the shrimp, but when they finished, they found that they were still hungry. Maybe also a few scallops, said one goblin to the other. The goblins scarfed the scallops, but when they were finished, they found that they were still hungry. So they went back for clams, and then urchins, and finally, even the sea cucumber. Finally, they were not hungry, but there was also nothing left. Just then, the pelican woke up. What happened to my food? she asked. Unable to lie about it, the goblins confessed their crime. The pelican was dismayed, but she was a charitable-hearted bird, and she could tell the crafty goblins were growing little creatures. Goblins, said the pious pelican, I will share my food with you, but you must insist in return, follow my example, and be as generous with others as I am with you. Take that to heart, and I will have considered your debt paid. But we have nothing to give, said the goblins. You have your nimble hands and your crafty brains and your loving heart, said the pelican. The crafty goblins realized how much they had to give, and for the rest of the day they looked for ways to help the other creatures of the forest. They found the stalwart moose struggling with an itchy, hard-to-reach spot on his back, and so they climbed up and gave it a good scratching. Next, they helped the old bear, who could not get the honey out of a narrow beehive. They climbed up to the top of a tree with a hive and then dropped it, cracking it open. Finally, they found the princess, crying over a loss she would not speak about. So they wrapped their little arms around her in a great big hug and stayed until she felt better. When they were done, they returned to the pious pelican. Did it feel good being as generous as I am? asked the pelican. It did, said the goblins. I'm glad, said the pelican. We all have our problems that we can't solve on our own. But if everyone goes about with generosity in their hearts, then there's always someone on hand to help. But we all must commit to do so, or there may be no one there to help you when you need it. This made sense to the goblins, and they thanked the pious pelican for her food and the lesson. Of course, by this time they were hungry again, and that remained an ongoing problem until the day the stalwart moose taught them to fish. But that is another story. And that is how the pious pelican forgave the crafty goblins and how she taught them charity. I didn't read The Pelican Helps Her Friends. Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient forest, an early winter storm blanketed everything in snow. It was so early in the year that the creatures of the forest were not yet ready for an ordinary winter, much less a bad one, and everyone agreed the storm was a sign the Ice King had plans for a long, cold winter. The princess had grown up in a kingdom where it was sunny all year long, and the goblins were very young, so no one in the big wooden house knew how to prepare for such a winter. The house was not well insulated, and they did not have enough fuel for food. Only the pious pelican noticed their plight, and when it came time to fly south with the other birds, her heart was heavy with sadness. What can I do, she thought. I'm a migratory bird, and if I were to stay, who would look after my flock? The time came to go, and the pelican struggled to take flight. It felt as though a leaden weight were stuck right in the center of her chest. What can I do, she thought. I am a migratory bird. And if I were to stay, who would look after my flock? She managed to take off, but only just barely, flapping fiercely to catch up with the other birds. As the pious pelican began her journey, the storm picked up, battering her to and fro. She had fallen well behind the flock, and she was already growing tired. But for all her challenges in the air, she could tell things were much worse on the ground. 
a deep freeze had settled over the forest. The leaden weight in her chest grew heavier as she thought of the princess and the goblins. What can I do, she thought. I am a migratory bird, and if I were to stay, who would look after my flock? The storm intensified, and the pelican was in a total whiteout. She knew she should have despaired, but all she could feel was the weight which had grown and grown until she thought she might drop out of the sky. She had felt called to help the princess and the goblins, but she had ignored it. I should have stayed, she thought. It was the right thing to do, and now I am lost, with no way to make it right. Suddenly she was plucked from the sky and deposited in the hall of the Ice King. Pelican, he said, you were flying in circles around my mountain. I was lost, she said, weighed down by the weight of guilt in my heart. The Ice King stared at her sagely. Is it guilt, or is it something else? Open your beak. He reached down inside of her, pulling out a glowing stone. The pious pelican was surprised at how it filled her with warmth, chasing away a cold and her doubt. You know what you must do, said the Ice King. The pious pelican flew straight to the big wooden house. Snow had already blown in through its many cracks, and ice crept across the floorboards. She found the princess and the goblins huddled in front of the quiet hearth, nearly frozen solid. No, she cried, and then she placed the stone in the princess's lap. The warmth of it spread through the whole of the house, melting all that had frozen. The princess threw her arms around the pelican's chest and the goblins clung to her legs. Thank you, they cried. You're welcome, said the pelican, smiling in deep satisfaction. What's that? asked the princess, staring at the wonderful stone. At first, said the pelican, I thought it was my guilt. But when the ice king pulled it out of me, I realized it was something much more powerful. Just then, the storm broke, and the skies cleared. The pelican filled the big wooden house larder with food from her beak, and then she took to the skies, lightened by the knowledge that through her charity, everyone in the big wooden house would be warm and fed until spring. And that is the story of how the pious pelican saved the wise princess and the crafty goblins from the long winter. Is there something I can do for you? So what are you doing there? Oh, just inventory. Guess I'm lucky I had the day off, huh? <laughs> yes, what a lucky coincidence. <sighs> okay. Earlier you said Marianne kept everything to herself, but you two had a big fight a few months before her death, didn't you? We argued all the time. You'll have to be more specific. This wasn't about who cheated at Canasta. This was intense. You locked yourselves in the office so we couldn't hear. I'm sorry. It was a long time ago. Now, I was in the middle of something. Okay. We'll leave you to it. Damn it. I think she knows more than she's letting on. <sighs> uh, duh. But there's no way to nail her down when we don't even know what we mean. If we could pinpoint what it was about, she'd be out of excuses. Sure, but how do we do that? The music was too loud to make out what they were saying. Mm. Marianne and Tessa were obsessed with that song. It was on all the time. What are you thinking? We've been getting these visions whenever we see or hear something really emotional. Maybe listening to it will trigger something. Hmm. You may be onto something here, Ronan. We can't go back to her with anything half-assed. We should go talk to Tom. Make sure we build as strong of a case as possible. Okay. Let's see if we can figure out what song it was. Hmm. Oh, can I? Okay. Hey, Tom. There's something I can help you with? How's the can? Remember that one song? This might be a weird question, but... Do you remember the song that Tessa and Marianne used to love? They played it all the time? (laughs) How could I forget? Uh, I think she's still got the CD back here. A little worse for the wear, of course. Uh, Hold on... Uh, Here it is. I was happy when it got put away, to be honest. A bit cheesy for my tastes.
This is it, right? Think so. <laughs> Whoa, I just got hit with a flood of memories. You seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah. Tom has no comment. Should we check this one out? I'm wondering if the religious pamphlet came from Tessa, and that's why. Mom, stop! That's so embarrassing! <laughs> oh, yeah? Tessa, come join me. I know you love this song. No, oh, I couldn't possibly. Some of us are actually trying to get work done here. I forgot how carefree she could be. Yeah. What the hell happened? You think there's more memory? I don't know. Let's we'll see. The kids keep pestering me for these candies. They're so expensive. I'll just grab a bag. It's fine. Oh, no. I, I can't, Tessa. It's nothing. Okay. But write it down in your little notebook. Okay, okay. Whatever you want. Yes. And I'll be by on Wednesday to help you close. Like I promised you. Tessa acted like she was Marianne's mom sometimes. I think you mean Tessa was self-righteous and treated Marianne like a charity case. She was trying to help. We should go find that notebook she was holding. Pretty sure I saw one marked 2004 in the office closet earlier. Yeah. I want to see if there's any other memories around, though. Well, maybe that's it. Well, I'm getting some vibrations. There we go. What are you doing here? Uh, I thought you needed help with the storm. I needed help two hours ago. Have you been drinking? What? No, I just had a day, okay? I took a pill. I'm fine. Mary Ann. I said I'm fine. Kids, come on, let's go. Wait, please. I have something for you. Take a look at this when you get home, okay? They can handle this confusion. I've been working with these people for years. They can help. What do you think that pamphlet was Tessa gave to Mary Ann? I don't the, know. The traditional family. It had a creepy vibe, but I didn't think much about it. It was bad, though. Like, maybe conversion therapy bad. I'm sorry. Whoa. If this is true, I want to know how Mary Ann felt about it. And we need to hit Tessa with some hard proof. Do you still have the pamphlet? Because that would be some... Is she still in here? I'm gonna grab this. Can I help you, Allison? Oh, uh, no, no thanks. I'm good. I'm just looking for something that I forgot. Ah, 2004. Anything interesting? June 24. 24 dollars for a meal at the restaurant paid off. This is for Elijah. 11 dollars doll for the kid. Eric B, February $50, March paid off February's debt, September $20 for gas paid in full. How many people does she... No show. Holy It looks like Marianne started flaking on her debt in October 2004. Five months before that night. April 50 oh, for... got it. <laughs> Hypothesis. Gas paid off. May 37 groceries plus 30 for new jacket for Allison paid off. Helped at the store. June 21 for medicine paid off. August 40 groceries paid off. Helped during rush inventory. October 140 for washing machine repairs. No show. 
November 55, new shoes for kids, checked, bounced. December, no show, not returning calls. January, no show. Uh, Tessa? Is it okay if I run a quick Google search? My phone's dead. Sure, but make it quick. I'm going to need the computer. <sighs> Don't miss out on this opportunity. That looks like spam. Virtue Seekers Youth Camp. Wait, what? Is that what she recommended for Tyler? I don't know what to say. I'm sorry, Tyler. Yeah. Let's see how Tessa explains this one away. Alliance for Traditional Families. That was what the pamphlet was. Watch Dr. Whitmore's talk, Articulating God's Design for Sexuality. Ten powerful Christian quotes that'll change your life. A Parent's Guide to Preventing Same-Sex Attraction. Youth Seekers. Virtue Seekers Youth Camp. Now it's 20th year. Order's been shipped. What did she order? Garlic peeler kitchen tool. Just got back from my workation and found the girls in bed sleeping like happy logs. Adrian said they were riding high when you picked them up from your place today, and apparently you got them both to eat care care. Please let me know what saint you prayed to to pull that off. All morning they've been going on about their camping trip with Auntie Tessa and all the s'mores they ate and bugs they caught. I can't remember the last time they were both this happy at the same time usually it's one happy and the other crying i know you're busy with the store and getting ready to be first lady so thanks for making time for them so sorry about the last minute drop off you know how work has been the girls say we love you auntie tessa p.s you and tom should come for dinner sometime adrian's been dying to show him the new media room which will keep them busy while we drink wine in the kitchen your favorite little sister I know y'all don't want to have this conversation, but Lisa has flaked on rehearsals again. She hasn't shown up in weeks. I know we were all moved to be on words by her performance of Danny Boy at Carl's funeral, but what good is a beautiful voice if you can't show up on time every week like everybody else? I think we should start planning the Winter Gala without her. Thoughts, Barb? I think we've seen enough. Yeah, we've got a good sense of what went down. Let's talk to Tessa. Let me see if Tyler has anything to say before... What are we waiting for? Let's go talk to Tessa. I think okay. we've seen enough. Yeah, we've got a good sense of what went down. Let's talk to Tessa. Is there something I can do for you? We remembered some We're things. Back. With details that should help your memory. Oh, really? Yes, really. Marianne was having one of her days. You were trying to talk, but she wasn't cooperating. The two of you started arguing. And you went in the office and cranked up that song you both loved. Hmm. And when was that? Well, our memories don't exactly have timestamps. Frick! I wasn't paying attention! August? October. October 2004. That was when she stopped trying to pay her debts, right? Yes. I don't know why. She always found a way to pay before that. But we never argued about money. I, I was frustrated, but you can't squeeze blood from a stone. Yeah, we didn't think you guys were arguing about money. We told her about the camp. We know you support the Alliance for Traditional Families, and that you gave her the pamphlet about their camp. What camp? You have the pamphlet. The Virtue Seekers Youth Camp. It was conversion therapy. You told her that Tyler should go there. I, um, I, t look, your mother was in a bad place. It was clear Ooh. she was coming apart at the seams. She told me she'd been struggling with you and I'd heard such good things about that camp. Your answer to my mother's bad moods was to send me to conversion therapy? Yeah. It's what I thought would help both of you at the time. She needed Tyler, mental health. it was worse than bad moods. She was not well. Not well at all. 
Do you know what they do to kids in those places? I do. Now. And how did Marianne take your helpful suggestion? Badly. Not well. <laughs> she wanted to let you be whatever perfect little butterfly was in that cocoon. And yes, we argued about it. So she was cool with who I was? She was more than that. She loved you. Listen, I don't mean to be rude, but I really do have a lot on my plate today. Okay. Well, get out of your way then. Thanks, Tessa. She needed mental health help, is what she needed. <sighs> oh, Tyler. Can we grab our groceries? Ah, uh, um, Michael already put them in your trunk. Okay, thanks. Bye, Tom. See you later. What are you thinking? Just uh, trying to wrap my brain around all that. I can't That'd believe you got Tessa Vecchi to talk about the past. Bravo. Yeah. Marianne, she had my back. It, it really doesn't change much, right? She was still fucking crazy. She still tried to kill me. But knowing she was trying to protect me before whatever the hell happened that pushed her over the edge, it, it feels good, Allison. Hey, look at me. You are allowed to feel however you are feeling about this. God, I could use a smoke. <laughs> don't. You're speaking my language. Don't. You don't need a smoke. <laughs> what? Sorry, I'm just thinking about what this means. Yeah, me too. Your mom didn't hate you. Well, it's a good thing Eddie's expecting us. He knew Marianne pretty well, and he was in charge of her case. Did he ever mention anything about the investigation to you? No, I never asked. And I'm sure he thought I was better off not knowing. I guess that might have made for some awkward dinner conversation. Exactly. But I mean, he's a good cop. Thorough. I'm sure he's got something. Let's go. This is kind of bleak. It's usually more crowded, but the other officers punch out at six o'clock sharp. <laughs> There's no crime after six? In the mean streets of Delos Crossing? Just bears and drunken disorderlies. And Uncle Eddie can usually handle them on his own. What a hero. Anyway, he's probably in his office upstairs. So does he work 24 hour days or does he work the late shift? We are so poking around yeah. before we go upstairs. So that this creepy mascot, huh? It's a local hero. What? Officer Justin Beaver is not creepy. He's Stella's <laughs> Crossing's longest serving officer. I think he's cute. I am the law. I think he's cute. Hold on. I want to catch up on all the Delos Crossing gossip. Just public safety stuff. Oh, that's all just public safety stuff. Nothing that interesting. National Guard. Oil cleanup? <sighs> that's still not cleaned up? Assholes. I wonder if the black oyster catchers were still nesting during the spill. Mm. God, I hope not. Too little, too late. Sign the petition, protect salmon migration, stop hunting large construction. Oh, so it's already gone up. 100% college tuition paid? Damn. Maybe I should have joined the National Guard. Beats mm. having your credit card stolen by an online college. Too soon, <sighs> Tyler. Too soon. Oh, no. 
Well, should I decide the wild world of accounting isn't for me? Uh, can't really picture you in the uniform. Really? I think I could pull it off. Yeah, I think she could too. What's this? Let us take you for a ride. Want to see what a police officer does on the job? Register for the ride-along program. Talk to Chief Brown for information. Hmm. I guess it's a safe enough town to do that. There was something. Locked. Maybe later. Of course. It's locked. Maybe later we'll get in there. Home sweet home. Mm. You spent a lot of time here growing up? Yeah, whenever Eddie was working. The whole precinct's basically family. Hmm. It's freezing in here. That's what the heater's for. <clears throat> Locked. Whew. That is going to smell lovely tomorrow. It's from Tessa's restaurant, right? Uh-huh. Everyone eats there all the time. It's as exciting as food gets in Delos Crossing. Well, supposedly it's good, so... Am I looking for something? Maybe later? I can't believe they're still sending psychiatric patients to prison. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about that. So messed up. Huh. Weird. Mm. So... Eddie must have locked it already. Can I open... No. What do you know? Still locked. Man, they are never gonna catch this guy. What exactly Mail? Did they do? Mailbox bandit? This guy keeps stealing out of people's mailboxes. Asshole snagged a box of fancy washi tape I ordered online. <laughs> uh, see, I was picturing an actual mailbox bandit. So was I. Like, hopping around on a post with a little mask on the door. Huh? You know, the mailbox is the bandit. That's. Sorry, it was a bad joke. That's not what I was picturing. I was picturing him stealing mailboxes. Huh. Hmm. Why do they look so familiar? Why does what look so familiar? What are you talking about? Where, what's happening? What is happening? The mailbox bandit, huh? Yep. All right, I'll get it in a second. How has this guy not been caught? On October 27, 2015, at approximately 1003 hours, Officer Greggs and myself were dispatched to 239 Woodlawn Road to respond to a report of a theft. We arrived at approximately 1022 hours and spoke with Officer Lawrence Cooper. Cooper reported that his mailbox had been broken into. Cooper stated, I checked it two days ago because I'm waiting on my new phone. They made me pay extra for shipping to get it here on time, but I said, I ain't having that shit. I'm going to pay what I owe and not a dime more. They backed down and said it would be well, here Thursday. Well, but what did you morning... expect, dum dum? It's a police station. But this morning the lock was smashed to shit, and there wasn't nothing in there. Probably that punk ass toe down. No, toe down is a street alias for Jarvis A. Swallow, known to myself and Officer Greggs, and formerly twelve eight eighty two, last known address, Almeida Plaza Apartments. Cooper also stated he had been home all night prior to the incident and heard nothing unusual. Cooper went on to state, when I find Toe Down, I'm going to stuff his ass up his own ass. 
Cooper was cautioned against making criminal threats. Cooper then stated his willingness to persecute Swallow and was directed to seek charges with the persecutor's office. You don't even know who it is, though. Dear Chief Brown and staff, this letter is to inquire about the mailbox bandit. It has been nine days. I still haven't had any mail. My granddaughter Madison is on her honeymoon at Greek House Resort in Jamaica. Ricky does computer work. She said she would write, and you know Madison keeps his keeps her word. I've called every day for nine days, and every time, Rose makes some kind of excuse. If this is because I didn't write the recommendation for her son, tell her that has nothing to do with doing her job. Stealing my mail may not seem like much to you, but getting away with crime makes the criminal more bold. How soon before you are after the mailbox killer? I remind you we donate to the Policeman's Fund every year, and it isn't easy for us but we do it because we believe in law enforcement, unlike some others. But if this is the type of service we can expect, perhaps the firefighters could use our support. Warmly, Laura Ann. Jeez. You feeling okay? Jury's still out, but it's not so bad. I barely remember being here that night. It's all a blur. Oh. I, I do remember being cold when we got here. Really really cold and then someone gave me a blanket and a hot chocolate and i wasn't cold anymore they tried their best to make us comfortable yeah that's gotta be hard where is this memory come on man we can't make these poor kids sleep here well where do you suggest they go can't go home. Social services will be here in a few hours, and this is the only room with a bed. Anywhere but a cell. We'll find some other place. Here we go again. God, not here too. I'm not ready. Me neither. Not locked? But locked? <sighs> Something's in the way. Something's in the way. Holding cell. She's gonna give me so much crap for forgetting her birthday. Aww. Happy birthday, Denise. 29th, keep up the good work, Eddie. Another year to prove that older doesn't really mean wiser. Have a kick-ass day, Dee Dee. Dan, enjoy your last year of youth before joining the bitter 30-year-old lady club. Don't waste it, Rosie. Hope you enjoy those spicy chocolates. Happy birthday, Dee. Joshua. Happy birthday, you don't look a day over 100, Maria. That's Denise Wilson's desk. Remember her? Uh, Crazy D? The woman who set fire to her ex's trailer? Allegedly Ooh. set fire. She was acquitted. And that's Officer Wilson to you. Holy crap. Oof, I should have gotten her something. You're a terrible person. It's your fault. I was so excited to see you that it completely slipped my mind. Remember this fella? No way. Is that Jet? Yep. He, uh... He died last year putting himself between D and a bear. Oh, damn. Poor D. Leave a note, wish her happy birthday. Maybe she won't notice that I added it afterward. <laughs> Happy birthday. With a cake. Oh, hold on. Looks like there was more I there. Should take her out for a birthday drink. She's obsessed with sled dog races now. Is that even a thing? Yeah. Oh yeah. She goes to the Iditarod every year. And she's got a fantasy league called Musher's Little Helpers. 
It's really cool. Man, I forgot what kind of kooky shit people are into <laughs> out here. Hey now, I'm in the league. Trail sled dog race winners list. Oh. Okay, now I think we can leave. Missing people. Remember Mr. Haynes? Vaguely. He had that workshop in his garage, right? Made those huge glass sculptures? Yeah. He's been missing for a couple months. Damn. Always liked his art. He just... damn. They never did find him. This happened when we were kids, right? Yeah. Marianne freaked out and wouldn't drive after dark for a few weeks. 33 years. Roberto Abbian was last seen in Dallas Crossing, Alaska, near Cullen Boulevard on 2 11, 2004. He was wearing a green fisherman coat and rubber boots. His glasses and gloves were found adjacent to the Brandon Strickland shooting range. I, I wanted to read the other guy's thing. Time of disappearance. Oh, age at time of disappearance. Eric Hayes was last seen on 7 2015 at 1200 hours near mile 56 of the Rosewood Highway wearing a short sleeve black t-shirt, blue jeans, and white sneakers. Okay. We didn't look at these desks. To all police department personnel from Pleasant Bay Health Mental Health Institute, October 16, 2015, patient transfer. To all Dallas Crossing Police Department officers, please be advised that due to overcrowding issues, patients Dean Becker and Kevin Sutton will be transferred so you really to the. Really hang out here a lot, huh? I mean, it's where Eddie works, so yeah. Is that so weird? It's just hard to picture a kid spending her weekends here. And where do you think kids spend their weekends around here? I don't know. Hanging out at a mall? The nearest mall is all the way back in Juneau. I went once a year to buy clothes with Eddie and did not hang. So that's transferring oh, mental. Gregs. Just leaving this out on display again. Greg's. Like Officer Greg's? The one who was with us that night. Yeah, he's still here. He became a bit of a local celebrity after nabbing a murderer from Juno. The guy was hiding out on a fishing boat and got really, really sick after eating out of the chum bucket. So it was actually a pretty easy takedown. You remember Dan and Shelby? I think so. The high schoolers who were always pissing Tessa off because they would blast fish and make out in the Vecchi's parking lot. Yep. Dan's a cop now. They're married and have a kid, a dog, the whole shebang. Damn. Did everybody decide to become an adult? Ten years, man. A lot changes. All right, let's head upstairs. Tyler, you coming? 